Hello beautiful ladies, this is Ashley Kay and welcome back to my channel. If you're a high quality woman looking for a high quality man, then you come to the right place. So today's topic is one close to my heart and that is attracting emotionally unavailable men. If you're attracting emotionally unavailable men or you're in a relationship with someone who just cannot give you the love that you know you deserve, is not able to open up his heart, is giving you crumbs, is just not giving you the respect and love you deserve, and you are still addicted to this guy, you don't want to pull away. I just want to do a quick video and explain what is going on. <clears throat> okay. So when we are attracted to emotionally unavailable people, it's because your energy is very similar when you first meet and are attracted to each other. It's like being dialed into the same radio station, okay? The only reason you can communicate and talk to each other and see each other clearly is because you dialed into the same station, same frequency. And that's why you are drawn to each other like magnets, okay? Two opposites of uh, the magnet. What happens if there is not enough intimacy, if there's not enough closeness, it's usually because one person's always pulling away whilst the other person's chasing. Okay, so there's always a perceived amount of distance, emotional distance or physical distance, but it's definitely a... Um, a feeling of distance between you and the man. Something about him and the way you connected, you were, the distance was always there, right? So it wasn't like all of a sudden the distance came, came up. So there were signs from the beginning, there were distance, that um, emotional distance in this relationship. Whether it's because he told you he just got out of a relationship and cannot be in another relationship or he is really timid about love again or he needs to move away and there's like actual physical distance whatever it probably was when you first met there were already distance there and then the dynamic got set up that now there's always some kind of distance between you and him and you may find that you're either the person always trying to close that gap or he is the one that's always trying to close that gap. Probably if you're watching this video, you're probably the one always trying to close that gap and he's not, um, maybe sometimes he comes towards you, but in general, you know, he's the one that's closed off and you want to know how to resolve this so you can actually, you know, have two open hearts and be emotionally connected. I believe if you're drawn to emotionally unavailable men and you're in a relationship with an emotionally unavailable man, it's because on a deep level, you don't believe you can handle more. So some people say like, you, you don't believe you deserve more. Okay. You don't believe you deserve love. You, you know, on some levels, you're not good enough. You, you just deserve the little that he's giving you. And on the other side of that is you also don't believe you can handle more love. Okay. So it's like, imagine you're a Sif and you have the perception that even if he was to give you a lot of love, if a man showed up today and he gave you, he just poured on the love, right? He gave you all the attention you wanted. He saw you, um, he you know, gave you all attention, the gifts, the love, the affection, and he just poured it all over you. Chances are you're gonna get freaked out. And you're probably gonna run the other way. Or you're probably not even gonna realize it because you're a Sif. So all that love he's pouring on you, it will just go through you. Just go through you, you will not even feel it. You will not even realize, recognize that he's pouring the love. Okay, that's what happens when you don't believe you're worthy of love. First, you don't recognize it when other people are being loving towards you because you're not loving to yourself. So you don't even know what loving looks like. You can't even see it when it's in front of you, right? Um, and second, if you do get an inkling that someone's loving on you and giving you all this attention, and it, it will probably make you feel very uncomfortable. 
and uncomfortable to the point where you start to sabotage your relationship. You start to, you know, pull away, distance yourself, uh, fall in love with someone else, cheat. Um, you know, like your brain, if your brain can't handle a, an uncomfortable situation, it will figure some way out of it. You know, it's like if you, um, and this is just how we're wired. Like we, we can't, we can't stay in uncomfortable situations. We always need to escape. We need to get out, you know, we'll claw, claw our way out. We'll do something. It's like almost like a knee jerk reaction. Like we can't handle it uh, or we think we can't handle it. Right. So that's two things that could happen. So because you're drawn to this kind of guy too, probably what you're doing is if he's pulling away and you're chasing him, the same thing happens on the reverse too. So you're pouring all this love on him. You know, you're giving, you're giving, you're giving, you're doing so much, but because he doesn't love himself or he doesn't think he deserves love or he was broken in the past or whatever. He can't feel that love. It goes through him like a sif as well. Okay. He can't feel it. He doesn't recognize it. So you're pouring all this love and attention and he comes back and he's cold to you. Or he, he, um, is mean, you know, he, he, he just is unappreciative. He treats you poorly, you know, that kind of thing. And because you're a Sif and you don't believe you deserve love, that his reaction to you plays directly into your narrative on the inside, deep inside. So now you're like, yeah, of course you would say that to me because I don't deserve love. You don't consciously tell yourself this, right? We're not conscious of it, but deep inside, we, we only put up with behavior that we think we deserve. Okay, so we, we will never be with someone who treats us in a way we don't believe we deserve, right? That's just how human beings are wired. And a lot of this stuff is happening underneath the surface, underneath your consciousness. So you are, you're just reacting to what feels right to do or what feels wrong to do, right? What, does it feel right or doesn't it feel right? So a lot of times if you are constantly in these emotionally unavailable relationships where you're chasing him and he's giving you nothing, not much, or you're running away and, he's, and the other guy's pouring on the attention and, you, and you're thinking, oh, he's just desperate, he's clingy, he's needy, I'm now turned off. That's because that's what you're used to. Okay, you've, you've done it so often that it now has become your comfort zone. That is just what you know, that's what you're comfortable with, um, that's what you think maybe you know, on a deep level, that's what you think relationships are. And that's what happens when you really love someone, that there is always this constant chasing or running away, chasing and running away, and there is never like two people who actually genuinely want each other, right? So that's something to really be careful of and to, to realize if that's happening, because there will be patterns of this um, throughout your relationship. Now that's what's going on. Okay. So it all comes down to self love on your end on and on his end. So you cannot, where I see a lot of women go wrong is they try to give him love thinking that their love will somehow fill him up. So when he feels all love, he can then fill her up. It's like you're both trying to feel each other's love, not realizing that both of you have like holes, right? You, the love's just gonna go through and all that effort is kind of wasted, never appreciated because it's just going through you like sifts. So what you need to do is instead of focusing on him, okay, his issues, what he did to me, what he's done wrong, it's everything about him, you've gotta turn it around on yourself, okay? Why, you know, you have to ask yourself, well, why don't I feel I deserve love? What's going on here? You know, why aren't I giving myself the love? Why can't I feel love when it's given to me? What does love even look like? Maybe start asking yourself those kind of questions. Like, how do I know if someone really loves me? How do I know I love myself? I found out <laughs> through inquiring about this and reflecting and asking myself questions that 
my idea of love was a bit messed up, <laughs> a bit messed up. Um, so I don't know where I got this from. Clearly I got this from my parents that I thought, you know, if someone really loved me, or, oh, I really love myself, then there has to be this um, negativity around it. There has to be criticism. You know, it's like, it's not real unless someone is criticizing me, unless I'm criticizing myself. And, you know, I had to do a lot of work on this. I had to do a lot of work on how to remove that thinking of criticism means real love. Okay, because, you know, I used to think like, I don't really know if I'm really close to someone unless they can tell me the truth. And sometimes the truth is bad, right? But I mean, which is fine, but it just, but that doesn't mean you need to tell the truth in a really negative way, you know? But I used to link it up like, okay, someone really needs to beat the crap out of me emotionally to show me they really love me. And also I beat the crap out of myself emotionally as well, right? I didn't realize that, oh, this is a little bit wrong. Um, because at the end of the day, I wasn't feeling loved when I felt criticized, when I criticized my criticize myself when I put myself down. I didn't feel loved, right? I just felt bad about myself. I mean, here's the thing that's difficult about loving yourself. If you don't really know what real love looks like, then you really can't love yourself, okay? If no one's really showed you what real love looks like, how can you love yourself, okay? You, you can't even comprehend what it's meant to look like or what it's meant to be like. Yeah, it's, it's, that's the most difficult part because like I said, if all you know um, was this unhealthy version of love, that's all you know, then that's all you're gonna go to, that you're gonna constantly go to that because that's all you know. So I highly encourage you guys to just dig a little bit deeper, ask yourself some of these questions and really think about it. Am I really taking care of myself? Am I really loving myself? Um, and what does love really mean? What does it really mean to love myself? What does that look like? Is it healthy? Is it right? Is it actually helping me? Is it making me feel good about myself or is it making me feel bad? Do I actually feel loved after I do this supposedly loving thing or do I actually just feel crappy? Yeah, deep, I know. <laughs> so, these are some questions to think about, okay? Don't um, get too crazy thinking about it, but it's certainly a place to start. And as you love yourself more, as you understand what real love means, then that relationship with that guy who's emotionally unavailable will automatically sort itself out. Because as you raise your energy or your frequency, um, you will naturally attract people of the same frequency to you. So if you are with someone who uh, uh, th this level of frequency to start with and then you raise your level, he will just drop away and you will not even be bothered by it. Okay? And he will automatically become uninteresting to you, unattractive to you, um, and appealing to you. That is just what naturally will happen. If he stays at that point anyway. Now hopefully what happens is he is inspired by your behaviors with yourself and how much you love yourself to then raise his frequency too. That could happen, but we can't bet on that happening. We can't bet on someone else changing their behaviors because really we have no control over that at all. But I recommend you just control you raise your levels, love yourself more, hope that will inspire him to love himself more and raise him up too. But if it doesn't, well, that's okay too. All right? That's my video for this week. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know what you think. Like me if you like this video and subscribe to my channel. That's it from me. I'll talk to you soon in my next video. Bye.